Welcome to Kathmandu, ancient city and tourist attraction. This is the political heart of Nepal, a country that's just seen its democracy taken away. In this square, a group of protesters is about to take to the street. I've been tipped off, and obviously so have the police, who also wait. Suddenly they appear. These political activists know their arrest is a certainty, so they have a strategy. Small groups of protesters appear suddenly in different parts of the square. This strategy gives each group a crucial few minutes to chant their slogans before police and unidentified men in plain clothes drag them away. Getting arrested for chanting pro-democracy slogans is new for Nepal. Three months ago, the king seized power, turning himself from a constitutional monarch into an absolute monarch. He declared a state of emergency and suspended key parts of the constitution, including freedom of assembly and freedom of expression. Under this state of emergency, thousands of people associated with the former democratic government have faced arbitrary arrest, including ministers, parliamentarians and members of political parties. What's left of the political leadership has gone underground. I'm going to meet a pro-democracy student leader who's in hiding. As arranged, we meet a go-between who'll take us to him. Kathmandu is crawling with informers and secret police, so we're using a secret camera when filming in public. We're taken to the latest hiding place of Gorgon Tapa. Hi, hey, Gorgon. Oh, yeah. How are you? Good to see you. Are you well? Yeah. Gorgon Tapa is a member of the Nepali Congress Party and a prominent student leader. He's been in hiding since February, changing houses every few days. It's not possible for us to stay in our homes. It has been raided for more than five times. It's not possible to move from here and there because it's due to the security condition. Gorgon is not appearing in street protests because he wants to stay out of jail and able to coordinate resistance. But there is also rumour that the phone has been tapped, so we have been very careful in this regard also. We, just, uh, we used to call from here, but we, we don't give our numbers to, to all the friends, just some selected ones only. With fellow student leaders like Pradeep, Gorgon is trying to organise street protests against the king's rule. Gorgon Tapa hasn't always had to hide. He's been a well-known face in Nepali politics for a number of years and a key organiser of demonstrations against the king. He's a popular student leader and well-known for his views against the monarchy.
Today, though, he never goes out without his simple but so far effective disguise. He's leaving now to attend a secret meeting of students. Inside the high walls of this courtyard, around 100 students have come to hear Gorgon speak. Large political gatherings like this are completely banned and obviously risky. Students can no longer meet on their university campuses because security forces guard them. As quickly as he arrives, Gorgon must leave. He can never stay in one spot for too long. It's the only safe way of operating in a country that became a palace-run security state overnight. It was the evening of January 31st this year. Inside the royal palace, the army and the king's men were putting the final touches on their plot. Even under Nepal's 15 years of democracy, the king always retained control of the army. Early the next morning, the takeover was launched. Security forces arrived at the homes of hundreds of politicians, placing them under detention. Gorgon Tapa had a lucky escape. One of the policemen called me at the time and he asked me, where are you at? I told, I told him that I'm, I'm just a few metres away from his home. And he told me that I have just heard your name in the, the walkie-talkie that is the seat of the police, that they have been already here to arrest you. So it's better for you to, to move away from here as soon as I got that message. So this was a policeman outside the house of the leader? Yeah. In fact, he helped me. He, he, got, he, he gave me the message and then I asked my, one of my friends and we, on his motorcycle, I, I ran away from there. The phone and mobile network were soon disconnected and put under military control. The next target was the media. The military turned up in TV and newspaper offices around the country. Uh, I think altogether there were uh, 18 people. And were they armed? Yes, with the M16s and other so many sophisticated weapons, Galil and submachine guns and uh, with uh, all, all sets, uh, walkie-talkie set and one. Uh, so they came and uh, told that, yeah, well, you know, the situation has been changed and uh, you have to follow the direct directives of the king and uh, the army. So we are here to support you, protect you and, you know, assist you in making good news. It was a dramatic and well-executed coup. The king and now absolute monarch appeared on national TV and explained why he'd done it. Prajatantra pragati ek arkaka paripurak hon. Tara Nepal ko bigat kehi barsa ko tito anubhavle yeslai asangati sabit garne chesta gariyo. For half an hour, the king delivered a scathing attack upon the political parties that have governed Nepal for the past 15 years, accusing them of corruption, nepotism and failing to deliver progress to the people.